This is our media room. Rather than having a TV, we bought an Epson Home Cinema 8350 projector to get the biggest picture possible in here. Since moving into our house seven years ago, we've just had a smooth finish white painted wall as our projection surface and have been perfectly happy with it. But at the same time, I've always wondered if we could get a brighter picture using an actual projection screen. So I started doing some research and found for less than $200, I could build my own screen and see what kind of a difference, if any, an actual screen makes. So what do you think? Do you think there's going to be a difference? Before watching the rest of the video, leave a comment with your prediction and then watch until the end to see if you were right or not. First, I had to measure the size of the picture on our wall to see how much screen material I needed and of course what size to build our new screen. Our screen measures 125 inches wide by 70 and a half inches tall, leaving us with a 144 inch movie screen. I then went to the place seemingly everybody on YouTube goes to for their DIY projector screen material, Carl's Place. Uh, I chose to go with their flexi gray material because that's the one that everyone seems to recommend and because gray screens are supposed to offer a better picture uh, compared to white screens when you have some ambient light in the room. When my wife and I watch movies or TV shows in our media room, we very often like to have the lights at the back of the room furthest from the screen on so we can see to move around and stuff because otherwise the room would be pretty much completely black <laughs> other than the light of the projector on the screen. Anyway, I ordered the screen material we needed and then went to my local lumber yard to get some material to build the frame with. I chose some 1x4 MDF boards because I wanted the material to be nice and straight. Natural wood like poplar and stuff is oftentimes very difficult to find 1x4 boards that aren't warped or twisted at least a little bit. Uh, I didn't want to mess around with boards that would possibly warp or twist, so that's why I went with the MDF 1x4s. To help me know exactly what dimensions to cut all my boards and perfectly space out the mid supports, I drew up our new screen in AutoCAD. I needed the top and bottom rails to be 125 inches long each. And since a 1x4 is 3.5 inches in width, that meant to achieve a total frame height of 70.5 inches, I needed to subtract 7 inches from all the vertical pieces, making them 63.5 inches long each. Thanks to AutoCAD, I was able to easily figure out how much to space all the boards from each other to create a nice solid frame. Um, and then it was uh, time to head out to the garage and get to work. I cut all my 1x4s to their appropriate lengths using my miter saw and then got to use the Craig pocket hole jig my wife just got me for Christmas for the very first time. Uh, these jigs are kind of expensive, but for projects like this, they're pretty freaking awesome. Granted, this is my first time using one, so I don't know all the ins and outs of them yet, but for this project, it made this super simple and look super clean. If you're wanting to build a screen like this, you, you don't have to go out and buy a pocket hole jig to do it, however. You can simply use some L and T plates like these to join all your pieces together. You'll just wanna make sure the screws you use aren't too long. As you can imagine, you don't really want them penetrating through your 1x4s. With all my pocket holes drilled, it was time to fasten everything together. Uh, this is a Craig right angle clamp my buddy Eric bought me uh, after he found out my wife had given me the jig for Christmas. And this thing made screwing everything together a breeze. Once the frame was all put together, I wrapped a piece of sandpaper around a scrap piece of 1x4 and sanded down all the joints so they're nice and smooth. I thought about trying to take the frame into my media room with it fully assembled, but it was just too big. Our, our media room is in our basement and there's not a lot of room at the bottom of our stairs to be able to make the turn into the room. So I had to disassemble the frame, take all the pieces into the room and put it back together again. 
So I guess as a small word of advice, if you're looking to build your own projector screen, uh, be aware that you may have to assemble your screen in the actual room it's going to be hung. <laughs> Once our frame was all put back together again, I rolled out the screen material onto my media room floor. It comes off the roll with the gray side up, so I had to flip it over and get the gray side down, which was a little bit of a trick to do for me, uh, seeing as the space I had to work in was only slightly larger than the screen itself. I then laid our frame onto the screen material and positioned it where I had plenty of excess material on all sides of the frame. I then grabbed my staple gun and started securing the material to the frame. I started in the center on one of the long sides and placed several staples a few inches apart. I then moved to the opposite side of the frame, pulled the material taut and secured that spot with a few more staples. I then moved to the short sides of the frame and repeated what I'd done on the longer sides. I first pulled the material tight and then secured it with several staples. I then moved around the screen in the same manner putting in three or four staples each time until the entire screen was finished. Uh, after the first few sets of staples on each side of the screen, I found a good way to keep wrinkles out of the material was to pull it at a slight angle uh, toward the corners of the frame. Um, when I pulled it straight out, sometimes some wrinkles would develop, but pulling toward the corner kept things tight and the wrinkles went away. Uh, once all of the edges were secure, I used a razor knife to trim off all the excess material, secured the corners in place, and then mounted it to the wall. Initially, I put two screws into some studs using a laser level to make sure the screen hung level, uh, but this left the bottom of the screen hanging out away from the wall while the top was flat against the wall, and my OCD just wouldn't allow this, so I had to come up with a different plan. I finally decided on using a French cleat, which involved me ripping some 1x6 MDF boards in half with the blade on my circular saw set to a 35 degree angle. I attached one of the pieces to each corner of the frame and then carefully measured out where the corresponding piece of the cleat mounted onto the wall. This keeps the entire screen the same distance off the wall, which I am much happier with. With the screen now hung in place, it was time to finally answer the question I had when starting this entire project. Does this gray screen make any improvement over my white painted wall? I set the ISO and white balance on my camera to where the picture on the preview screen looked as close to what I was seeing in person as I could, and then started shooting. Of course, what things look like on camera still isn't 100% accurate to how it looks in person, um, but this should give you a good idea. For testing out the new screen, I fired up Spider-Man Far From Home and let the first couple minutes of the movie play. With all the lights in our media room on, our smooth finish white painted wall looks pretty washed out. There's just too much light in the room for our projector to compete with. Switching over to our new screen, uh, once again, keeping all the lights on, I do feel there is some improvement. The picture is still pretty washed out uh, and doesn't offer all that good of a viewing experience, uh, but it is better than the plain white wall. Wow. Now, if I split the screen, you can see the two side by side. And although not ideal, the gray screen does make the picture somewhat easier to see. Uh, but to be honest, I would never watch anything in this room with all the lights on. So let's move on to the scenario I built the screen for. When my wife and I watch stuff in our media room, we turn the lights in the front of the room closest to the screen off and leave the lights at the back of the room where we sit on so we can see to move around or grab snacks or whatever. As you can clearly see, just projecting onto our smooth white wall, it looks way better than when all the lights were on. Uh, there is still some light from the lights at the back of the room that makes its way to the screen wall, but overall the picture is sharp and clear. You can easily see everything going on. Switching to the gray screen, 
The first thing I notice, and I'm not completely sure how I feel about it, is the image is darker looking. On the one hand, this causes the blue sky in these opening shots of the movie to actually look blue, uh, rather than almost white, uh, which I like. And in this scene, Nick Fury's coat actually looks black, rather than dark gray. When I compare the two side by side, it's actually kind of hard for me to pick a favorite. I can't say with any kind of certainty which one I prefer. Uh, I like the better color saturation and deeper blacks the gray screen provides, but at the same time, I like the brighter picture and warmer tones the white wall generates. On camera here, the gray screen makes things look more blue, but it doesn't look quite like this when viewing it in person. It just looks darker, kind of like it's overcast rather than bright and sunny. For our final scenario, I turned all the lights completely off. Uh, this is of course going to give us the best results both the gray screen and our smooth white wall are capable of. In this first shot where we're projecting onto the white wall, the picture looks amazing. It's bright, sharp, and clear. You can't really see it here on camera at all, but the light bouncing off the wall does light the room up a little bit. It's not a big deal or anything, but that white surface reflects a lot more light out into the room than the gray screen does. Uh, switching over to the gray screen, the picture is noticeably darker. Just like before, the colors look more saturated and the blacks are much deeper. While I really like the better color saturation and the deeper black tones, I really like the brighter overall picture our white wall gives us. But at the same time, I must admit, I don't really notice it or miss it so much when I'm watching something on the gray screen in person. It's really only when I'm comparing the two side by side, like I'm doing on screen right now, that I wish the picture was brighter. While I was actually shooting all of this footage for this video, um, since I shot all the stuff on the white wall all at once, and then all the stuff on the gray screen all at once, and wasn't able to see them side by side in person, I felt they both looked great once the lights at the front of the room were turned off. It was really only once I was able to review this footage that I was able to form this opinion. So now the question I have to ask myself is, was it worth it? Uh, was it worth the money, time, and effort I put into building and installing the screen? I, I think I'm about 60-40 in favor of saying yes. Since our media room is in our basement, I can make it pitch black in there at any time of the day. So the smooth white wall really is sufficient. Uh, even with the lights in the back of the room on, the picture is still great and can easily be seen. For someone else, however, that doesn't have a smooth wall they can paint white, a dedicated screen makes a lot more sense uh, because smoothing out a wall that has texture on it is a bit tougher task than just building a screen like this. Also, for someone that isn't able to make the room pitch black at any time of the day, the gray screen does offer a better picture when there's some ambient light in the room. What you're seeing right now is a split screen of our white wall with all the lights off and the gray screen with the lights at the back of our room on. There is some difference in the picture here, but overall I feel these two look really close to each other. And getting close to the same picture with some lights on, where previously I had to turn all the lights off to get, is the difference maker that put me to 60% in favor of saying yes, the money, time, and effort were worth it. So how did your uh, prediction at the beginning of the video end up? Uh, did my little experiment help you learn something new, or did it just solidify what you already expected or knew the outcome would be? Uh, either way, I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, in which case, also, I hope you go ahead and do all the YouTube things, you know, like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content from me.
If you'd like to help support the work I do here on my channel, please check out my Amazon store at the link in the video description where you can purchase products I feature in my videos. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in another video real soon. Bye.